Hey YouTube and GimpTV.net, welcome to another GIMP Know How tutorial. And in this tutorial, I will be teaching you um, advanced photo manipulation. Uh, so what we're going to be doing in this particular photo manipulation is taking uh, three pictures of me in different poses and in a different clothes and putting them on a backdrop of this piece of paper on a, on my desk uh, right here. So I'm going to make uh, one of my pictures being holding a pencil. And then I'm going to uh, take a picture of something Wilbur, uh, the GIMP mascot, uh, make it look like a sketch on this piece of paper, uh, and then add the pencil to that person's hand, all while cutting them out and making them look realistic as if they're climbing over this piece of paper. Now, it sounds pretty hard, but you can actually do it quite easily. It just takes a bit of time. So, uh, on with the tutorial. Oh, by the way, I got a new profile background. If I do say so myself, it looks awesome. Here it is. You guys should go check out my profile. Comment if you like it or not. And, uh, yeah. Now on with the tutorial. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is open up your main backdrop. Uh, now you will need at least, uh, one pose of yourself. Uh, picturing as if you're gonna hold a pencil. Uh, so in this case, I've been posing like this, and that is me, in case you were wondering. Uh, so open up the backdrop picture. Um, mine is, oh, this one. And if you're taking it with the camera, the picture will be huge, and that's okay. Uh, so the first thing we need to do after opening the backdrop picture is to open up your first pose. And open up your first pose. Here's my first pose, and it's the one holding a pencil. Now click OK. Uh, now that we have this open as layers, uh, you do need to take the picture so that it looks like you're holding uh, something. In this case, it's a pencil, so I made it look as if my hands were cupped around a pencil. Uh, now we're going to take the scale tool, scale this down. Whoops. Make sure this chain is checked. Scale it down about like that. And press Enter to confirm. Now uh, move them right to about where you want it. I'm going to scale it down maybe just a little bit more. Okay, and once you're scaled to where you think you should be, uh, we're going to zoom in on this photo right here. Uh, so here's me, and the first thing we need to do is cut me out. And this process is also called rendering. So I'm going to be using the free select tool when I render. And on this free select tool, I'm going to click Feather Edges. I'm going to feather them by one pixel. Uh, now you're going to take the free select tool and make a line segment uh, thing around your face. And keep it pretty detailed. Continue doing this around your whole entire body. When you're done with the free select tool, you should get something like this. About like that. A rough outline. Uh, once the outline is complete, and if you spend more time, this is tedious and it does take a while, and the longer you spend on it, usually the better it comes out looking. Uh, so click Select Invert once you have a selection, and then click Edit Cut. Then click Select None. Now the Paths tool would have worked just as well for this you should be left with a render of yourself, just like this. Move it in where you would like it. Uh, I'm going to scale it down just a little bit more yet. Make myself seem very diminutive. And once you're done, uh, you may also notice that you get this white stuff around your hair. And I forgot to cut out that center, but oh, that's okay now. Um, I don't have that much time left in the tutorial. Uh, take a black, uh, black fuzzy brush. Uh, right about here, uh, right click on the layer and click add layer mask. 
Uh, now paint over with black. Now you could do the same thing with the eraser tool, but you know, layer masking, it, it's just more, more like a habit for me. And then just kind of uh, fuzz along the hair there until there's really no more white there. Once you're done, click apply layer mask and then view, zoom, 25%. Now there's a few things about this person standing on the picture that don't look right. Uh, for one, he doesn't have a shadow, uh, so let's fix that right now. Duplicate that layer, and then on the bottom layer, right click on it and click alpha to selection. Take your paint, uh, paint fill tool, click fill whole selection with black as your selected color, click on the person, then click select none. Then we're gonna go over here, grab the perspective tool, uh, click right over here and just like that make a perspective transformation now you can see that the light source uh, could be coming from over here since there's a sun glare it's actually coming from over here but you can't really tell just once you pick a light source you have to remain consistent with where that light source is uh, so now on the shadow layer we're gonna uh, apply a slight Gaussian blur by going filters blur Gaussian blur uh, blur it, oops, blur it by about 15 pixels. And then uh, tone the opacity way down, about like this. Now you'll notice that the paper is slightly elevated off the table. And we can fix this uh, to make it more realistic by editing the shadow just a little bit. Uh, so we're going to take the free select tool again and uh, right click on this layer again and click alpha to selection, and that's the shadow layer. And then on the mode, subtract from the current selection, follow the paper line up, and subtract the shadow that is not on the paper. Once you're done, click Edit, Cut. That should delete that shadow, then select None. Now, make a new layer, and click Edit, Paste. Uh, make a new layer again. Move that down underneath the... Uh, my layer, uh, your picture layer, uh, tone the opacity way down again, and now that we've separated the two halves of the shadow, move this off the paper, but offset it slightly, and this means that it will give the paper some more depth. And I'm just going to copy the opacity, which is 12.8%, and since it's on a, a, a not quite as light surface, we can even make it a little bit less opaque for some more added realism. So here's what we have so far, and it does not look that bad at all. Uh, but you'll notice the color is slightly off. Uh, it looks to be, maybe I need a bit more red in me. Uh, so click Colors, Curves, and uh, take the red curve, and just tone it up a little bit. Not too much, just like that. It makes all of the difference. And then on Value, uh, maybe make me a little bit lighter and click OK. So now I look pretty natural in the picture, except you can see my feet are kind of roughly cut out. And you can fix that when you cut yourself up. Now you need to do the same for the next two models. Uh, so file open his layers, and my two models are one of me standing down in different clothing. This adds to the effect of there being more than one person. So scale that down. Uh, you want to make them relatively the same size. It, it'll add for more realism. So in my model, I'm going to have this guy standing up here, looking down at the drawing. And then I'm also going to go... have this picture of me looking thoughtful, squatting down. around over here. And I'm going to do the same steps as I did to that person to both of these. Gender's position, how you think they should be positioned. Uh, in my case, I have one looking down, one guy with a pencil, and one, uh, one of me staring up uh, thoughtfully, I guess you could say. Uh, so the next things I'm going to do is put a pencil into his hands and uh, make, a, make a photo look like a sketch on here. So I guess the first thing I'll do is make the photo look like a sketch. So go file, open as layers, and open up your desired photo. 
Uh, mine is a .png of Wilbur, so I don't have to render him. And Wilbur is the GIMP mascot, in case any of you may not have known that. Even though that's rare. Uh, scale him up pretty big, it doesn't matter, because we're going to be pixelating him anyway. Uh, hit uh, enter for uh, making the scale work. Uh, for completing the scale. And uh, now he does not look like he's on the paper at all, so we're going to head all back to our good old perspective tool and uh, adjust the perspective until you get a pretty good looking one of him on paper. So that looks like a good one on him on paper. Now transform. And now here we're going to make him look like a sketch. So the first thing we need to do is go colors, desaturate. Then click OK. Uh, now we're going to go filters, artistic, photocopy. And let's look at Wilbur to see what our mask should be. Um, sharpness up all the way. Uh, let's go mask radius about 13. It'll vary for every image. And, and then click OK once you found settings you like. And now click colors, uh, color to alpha. Select white as your color to alpha. Click OK. And you should be left with something like this. Uh, now we're going to duplicate this. And may, no, that's about good for duplication. And now we're going to go filters, artistic. And it's filters, distorts, Shift and tone down to see Wilbur. Shift it by 14. You have to remember this is a pretty big image. And that makes it look reasonably like a sketch. Uh, once you have your sketch completed, the next thing we need to do is put a pencil in his hands. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is render out this picture of a pencil. I'll come back when I've done that. So here I opened up the pencil, scaled it bigger, and rendered it out, which you can do the same way uh, I rendered out the um, me, actually. It's kind of awkward talking like this. Uh, now, anyway, we need to make it look as if the pencil is in his hands. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is obviously rotate it the right angle. Uh, so looking at my hands, I can see that I need to rotate it to about here. And click Rotate. And then we need to make it look as if he's actually holding it, as if I'm actually holding it. Again, awkward. Uh, so we're going to, as we can see, the angle is a little bit off yet. We need to rotate it. Now, the easiest way to make it look like you're actually holding the pencil is to tone down the opacity of the pencil layer. And then I'm going to zoom in. Uh, so here are my hands, badly cut out, by the way. And I've decided I'm going to have this hand over the pencil layer. So we're going to take the eraser tool uh, with a fuzzy brush, a smaller fuzzy brush, that's about good, and erase the parts that this hand should be covering. Once you're done with that, the pencil in your hand should look something like this. Uh, now the pencil doesn't look right for the picture, and that's because we need to adjust uh, the curves just like we did with the people. Pencils are no more special than people. Uh, so we're going to go colors, curves, and we're going to make it for the pencil. Whoops. Oh, there it goes. I think we need to make the pencil a little bit lighter. Maybe a little bit darker. A little bit darker, and then tone down the contrast. So you can go colors, brightness, contrast. Tone down the contrast. Not that much, just by a little bit. And that makes it more native to the picture. Uh, once you have toned down the contrast and made the pencil look realistic, well, you're done. Uh, you really are. You have a fairly realist... Oh, I forgot one important thing. The shadow of the pencil would have been bad if we forgot that. Anyway, uh, you can do that the same way you did with the people. Uh, so... I don't, I don't feel that I need to demonstrate it to you, because uh, I am very well running out of time. So thank you very much, YouTube, for watching this tutorial. Uh, here's what I'm going to do, just so I get a nice ending thumbnail on my video.
there. Uh, that is the final product of this video. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Uh, the more time you take on rendering, the nicer it'll look. Uh, again, I am Gimp Know How, and I think that's about all I have to say.